Well, joining me in the studio today is writer and commentator Candice Holdsworth and also delighted to welcome Howard Cox, founder of Fair Fuel UK and also Reform UK's London mayoral candidate as well. Good morning to you both. Morning. Thank you very Good much morning. for joining us. Howard, before I come to you, I'm just going to get a quick thought from Candice because we were talking about the Competition and Markets Authority earlier. They've got a report out today finding motorists paid an extra six per litre for fuel at supermarkets last year it, compared to pre-pandemic uh, years. Now, lots of us were of the view that prices had gone up because, you know, wholesale uh, prices had gone up and they were just passing that on. But it looks like they were, well, basically, Asda, Morrisons, Tesco, Sainsbury's, some of the big four, they were actually overcharging to the tune of 900 million in total, putting up their profit margins. Um, but only now, you know, midway through 2023, do we have a report from the Competition and Markets Authority? Yes, it's been reported that Rishi Sunak told them to get their report out quicker because he knows that this is a big problem and any any solution that he's put forward, like price controls or anything like that, have just quickly been shot down. So yeah. I think he needs someone else to comment but on it. This is a two-week thing. Yeah. I mean, you literally, let's have a look at the prices, look at what they've been charging, look at what they should have been charging compared to 2019 prices. You could have done this in two weeks. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah, they've been asleep and people have been charged higher prices as a result and oh, inflation's and still st high. And we see this again and again in many, many fields. We see this with the energy companies, we've seen this with off yes. Again and again and again, the same thing. We've got these regulators who are too much of a soft touch. God knows what they're doing with their time and all their staff and their budgets, but they don't seem to be doing the job they're supposed to do, which is to regulate these industries. I know, and with water especially, they said there's regulatory capture as well, mm. and that can happen. They're well, way too influenced. The new chief executive of Thames Water used to be the chief executive of Offwater. I mean, well, this <laughs> I is mean it, in right? no way is there a problem there. Right, well, let's talk to Howard Cox, a man who has been campaigning on this issue for cool as long as I can remember <laughs> Howard the, lo the long winter nights must just fly by in the Cox household <laughs> you're absolutely right I mean I've been doing this since 2010 and uh, yeah. I I've been part of four uh, well, it was you remember OF off off whatever it was off com no it was off com OFT, OFT the Office yeah. of Fair Training yeah. and then it, it evolved into the CMA. There were four inquiries and the first three um, really said we didn't see any uh, nothing evidence. to see here, Gov. No, exactly, no evidence of opportunistic profiteering. But it's been going on for, since the year dot. No, but it was the case for many many years that um, that the big supermarkets would actually use low prices in their forecourts yeah. to to entice uh, customers in saying come and do your weekly shop and then get your fuel and we're offering a low price and they took it as basically it was a bit of a loss leader they barely made any profit on it and that of course drove down prices at other garage forecourts as well so that was good news although of course let's face it we know most of the price of a, a litre of petrol or diesel is actually tax yes half of it is tax and it's yeah. you know and what what we're seeing actually to be fair they did use uh, uh, to increase footfall to into their supermarkets yeah. and they gave you this uh, if you buy 50 quid you're going to get five yeah. off a litre and, and and but somehow since um, since lockdown or or during you know since Ukraine war it, it's turned on its head and we've seen these big supermarkets as to Morrison's Tesco and Sainsbury's they're accusing of overcharging so 6p extra litre uh, for your petrol uh, 30p extra for diesel um, 900 million quid extra profit they they made which they shouldn't have made if they'd stuck to the similar sort of uh, profit margins um, this is a long issue though isn't it that whether it's the government or whether it's businesses motorists are a cash cow absolutely right and the government have known this for a long long time and there's the, the, the diesel gate scandal this is a big one because diesel for the last six months for example in wholesale terms has been much cheaper than petrol but have you seen diesel cheaper than petrol as you drive past any four -call? no it's not this is pure exploitation pure profiteering and to be fair to asda for example uh, they are being fined sixty thousand for actually passing on decent information mm -hmm. of the cma which is not touching won't touch the sides no. but what the interesting thing that is that they have been taken over by euro garages and euro garages one of the biggest uh, you know as they had this low pricing ethos they had it all the time you knew you could rely on them and morrison's they would always be the cheapest it is not the case and they, that would therefore the competition would therefore bring down uh, other other businesses um in in terms of um in terms of what happens now i mean it's taken a long time what what, what is the answer well as you know i've been campaigning for since 2018 i, I presented a, a pump watch to mm. robert jenrick when he was the exchequer secretary and pump watch is fundamentally so we've got off what we've got off com off gem i know they may not be the the most incredibly successful uh, watchdogs pricing but they there's no consumer price regulatory body for drivers mm. 37 million drivers yeah. 89 percent of them vote uh, and, and a huge amount of the tax take 
Ab absolutely. Well, it's the fifth largest income to the Treasury comes from yeah. drivers. And that's not just fuel duty. Yeah. It's the VAT well, on well, fuel that's the duty. Thing. It's, it's, it's rather in the interest of the government for, for these sort of prices to go up, isn't well, it? Well, because they get, they, they, they get the VAT and the fuel duty on top of it. The trouble is, of course, we know that when fuel prices are high, that drives up costs for everyone because it's every single item that you buy in the shops, every item of food, every single thing comes in the country. Every time it's transported, it costs a load more. And those, those prices are going to be basically handed on to the consumer. Consumer. driving inflation people then say I need a pay rise you drive more inflation this is I mean this is a huge aspect of our cost of living crisis well petrol is currently we've worked out at Fairfield UK it's something like 9p higher and it should be now yeah. and diesel's 15p higher and it should be now 15p uh, multiplied by 55 litres the average family car is eight quid you've got to find extra yeah. now this is one of the key things I, I mentioned this earlier and I know I got on about this but I think I, I'm so aware of this because I, I genuinely I, I put we've got a, a car I, I put 90 quid's worth of diesel yeah. it's completely empty cost 90 quid to fill up I could, It'll cost 90 quid to fill up. Last time I did it was 75 quid. That's not money. But I've got to be honest with you, I, I fill up so really. We barely use the car because yeah. we, we're lucky. We live in central London. We can use... Great public yeah, transport. Great public transport and Ubers and all of that and everything. And, and basically policy on transport and taxing levels and all of these bodies that do all this, you know, the Competition and Marketing Authority and all of that, they're all based in London. Everyone lives in there. And they're all used to having this wonderful trans public transport network. I, I do think this is a major issue in this country. And when I tell people, and I bang on about this all the time on the show, but when I say to people in, in the world of politics, 80% of people rely on their car to get to work, to get their kids to school, to do anything at all. They simply can't go anywhere without a car. Yeah, there's a bus, but the bus goes twice a day. You know, people, people, most people, an awful lot of people drive for for their jobs, whether it's lorry drivers, whether it's you're a plumber, you're a you're a builder, whether you you know you're a tax driver, and. I think that this, this, this using motorists as a cash cow thing is something that only London centric politicians and policymakers would do because, well, it doesn't really affect them. Okay, so it's an extra eight quid for, a, for to fill up your car. Well, they only fill up their car once a month. It's not a big deal. Some people fill up their car sort of every couple of days. Well, that's right. They've got no choice to do it. And I've got a, a really good contact in the Treasury who says every sort of autumn or spring statement or budget, the first thing they have on the line, how much more can we get out of drivers? He yeah. admits that they actually have that question. They sit down, wow. or these, and, and it's sad. Wow. It is pure fleecing. Now I'm delighted at last. It's taken a hell of a long time, as I say, uh, six mm. years for the pump watch to to, to evolve, and I, 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 it's got to have teeth. You've got though. a regular column in the Sun. You're on the yeah, biggest yeah. selling newspapers in the country. You're getting some. Measure. They have to listen to you. You're also a candidate in the in the London mayoral election as well. We'll come to that in a moment. Um, but this, I, I think, I think, I think motorists are fed up. Yes. Um, but also, they simply can't afford to keep cars on the road again. People People can't run businesses. People can't afford. We're their in a product. cost of living crisis. We are in a cost of living crisis, and and people need help. And yet, the people who don't get the help, it seems to be, it's always motorists. Yeah. They don't, they don't. The problem we have at the moment, there's so many anti-driver policies. Yeah. And this is one reason why, you know, I'm standing in London against the mail. I've been two to three thousand emails I've had in the next six months. Please stand against it. Yeah. I, I realise it's an uphill battle, but someone's got to take that man to task. And I'm going to a judicial review yeah. today on ULES. At the High, at the high, at the high court. court, yeah. I mean, this And this is over whether or not the ULES uh, scheme, which is, you know, ultra low emissions uh, zone. I mean, for those people, again, you're not in London, that's fine. Don't worry, it'll but happen. But it's coming to a city. It will with... happen to you every... It all, if it happens in California or New York, yeah. it happens in London and then it happens elsewhere. That's the deal, isn't it? But basically, we've got our ultra-low emissions zone uh, central of London. Well, it's not that central. I mean, it's, you know, it's most of most of central London. And they're going to expand it to basically using the whole of the North Circular, then to the whole of, of all... Those, yeah, now it's the M25. Look, I mean, basically, uh, a, a lot of people with cars which are, uh, you know... Just, just not old, old, but people who can't afford brand new cars are, are going to fall foul of these new rules and they're going to cost, face a huge cost to drive into their own city. Well, they've all passed the MOT emissions test. That's yeah. the irony of this sort of thing. Yeah. They're going to be asked to be charged. And it hits, it's a regressive tactic. It's low income families and small businesses. Yeah, people who, people who just go, oh, I'm just going to just go lease or buy a new car every three years. Well, you're fine, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, but this is the thing about this is it, it, it's an incredibly unpopular move. Incredibly, and there's no evidence it's, it's even needed because there's a whole nonsense that we've got to stop the polluted air in our capital city uh, if you actually look at any graph in terms of pollution in London and indeed any other major city in this country it's 
plummeted. I mean, so it, 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 we are we are looking at the cleanest air we've had since pre-industrial eras. In fact, cleaner than pre-industrial eras. And it went down massively even before the low emission zone. And uh, you probably remember that I actually went down to 14 underground stations yep. with my uh, uh, trusty air quality control, which is used by TfL and is used by the WHO. And something like, in terms of particulates, which is more dangerous than NOx, yep. uh, uh, we're looking at something like 1,800% more pollution down the, in, so in the So there's something like travelling, and the city car was asked about this recently, oh, and, yes. the mayor, and he was saying, no, it's absolute nonsense, absolute nonsense. But actually standing, basically catching one tube journey is, is the equivalent of basically standing by the side of a busy road, breathing in the fumes for sort of a whole day, isn't it? You're, you're absolutely right. And I was sent by an underground driver. He obviously doesn't want his name mentioned, but he said to him, this is me starting my shift, and he blew his nose. Sorry to put it, he had, yeah. he had clean effluent. Yeah. But but when he finished his shift, it was black. Oh, yeah, I get off, the, I, I have to wash my hands. And look, I mean, and this will be the same with lots of different uh, um, you know, transport systems, systems around uh, every different you know, city and town in this country. But the reality is, you know, we, we need to be able to get about yes. and there is going to be some pollution from that and, and there's pollution from having a fridge but it's quite useful to have cold food as well and people forget that vast vast amounts of our pollution is simply from having things like fridges and heating and you know and and, and basic stuff like that um can i ask you about just stop oil though because yeah. the prime minister is calling in sporting bodies and the police and uh, big event organizations on wednesday to discuss disruption to sporting events we've got wimbledon at the moment we had the ashes disrupted uh, by this just stop oil protesters dealt with magnificent certainly by Johnny Burstow. Um, but um, there's been a warning from Andy Murray, who, I, mean, I love Andy Murray, but he said, look, I support Just a Pile, I support your cause, oh, yes. but but please don't run on to the court. I mean, he does travel by private jet. It's... It's a little bit. I mean, it's just a load of hypocrisy, isn't it? I, I get sick together of these celebrities coming out with all these sorts of things. They're sitting on their huge bank balances and they can travel any way they like and they're lecturing people who can't afford, as we just spoken to, the, this regressive taxes and all the other things impact on low-income families. It's not right that these people actually lecture us on these situations. I mean, I mean but and yet they do. I mean, I think that I think the fight back has begun. Oh, it has, and I'm 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 part you, of that fight. You back. are absolutely part of that fight back. Um, in terms of what you think might actually happen, in terms of prices at the pumps and motorists being able to just, you know, I mean, I know people genuinely say that they they don't know if they can afford to go to work. Yes. They can't afford to get a job because they can't afford to even go to the job interview because they can't afford the petrol. Correct. What 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 can what what will happen and what should happen? Well, what should happen is uh, the big thing for me is that uh, the government could actually knock inflation down by one or two percent by cutting fuel duty by twenty pence and introducing pump watch. The combination of those two will have a massive impact and lessen the cost of living crisis. As far as what will happen, it's all dependent on the marketplace. It, you know what happens in the Middle East and of course what's happening in China with oil prices, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, we are held by a ransom note, aren't we, regularly regarding oil. And that's what's happening. And, of course, the exchange rate, that's been pretty stable recently, so that's good news. But fundamentally, I think you're going to be seeing petrol and diesels probably reach uh, rock bottom now. I, I think it might just sneak up a bit over the next uh, couple of months. OK, great to hear from you. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch what happens at that High Court I'll hearing keep today. You I'm sure you will. Howard Cox there from Fairfield UK.